Here's our procedure for doing alignment. Uh, usually this would be done at night because I can't see any stars right now. Before I begin, I want to note that the telescope leg with a number on it is actually facing north. Now the way that I know that is because I've been doing this for a while. But you are going to look actually, come back over here, we can see the observatory building behind us. And in the distance, we can see the mountains of Santa Barbara. And above those mountains, we would see Polaris, the North Star. We want the leg pointed towards Polaris. If we look at the keypad, the keypad is going to be facing 90 degrees from north in this direction. This is east. So at the end of the evening, the keypad should be facing here. You'll also notice, oh, I think we're okay. We've noticed that the body of the telescope is facing down. That's how we begin the, the uh, and end the evening. So before uh, we can make it move, we need to pull up the battery pack. You can take it out from underneath the telescope and you flip the on switch right here. At the end of the night, you're gonna to toggle that back, not to the charge position, to this position here. So we turn it on, we unwrap about you know, two meters, five, six feet of this uh, cable. And uh, we're going to place this back underneath. And if you look at the bottom of the keypad, there's a small hole where we can plug this in. Okay, I plugged it in and nothing's happening because right next to it is a switch. We're gonna go ahead and switch that on and look at the keypad, uh, now light up and we see some words coming uh, from that. And it actually says, next R S E press enter to begin alignment. So we will go ahead and step back here. We will go ahead and press the enter button. Now we have different ways to do the alignment. We're going to recommend, uh, especially because we only have a limited number of opportunities, we're going to recommend the auto two star alignment method. So the auto two star alignment method allows us to align a first star and then let the telescope go to a second star. We just fine tune uh, the details. So I'm going to go ahead and change the option by pressing the 9 button to change it to Auto 2 Star. You can see it reads Auto 2 Star. At that point you press Enter and it's now going to ask me for the time. You'll notice we're in military time. Uh, it's an early afternoon right now, but we're going to go ahead. This would be a typical time, say 20, would be 8 o'clock, right? We're going to go ahead and put in, you know, the time right now. And let's say that it's about 14.30, 14.30, and put in the seconds, I don't know what they are, and press enter, and it's going to ask me, is this daylight savings time? Now it's important that while we, were, we are in daylight savings time, you just press enter, but if you want to change it to standard time, you would use the 6 or the 9 key to change it. So again, we want to be in daylight savings time and press enter and it wants the date so the today's date is the 17th so it's 10 1 0 1 7 and we don't need to change the 20 so we just press enter and now i get to choose my first star so again the the star that you choose um is a star that you know i would suggest fomalhaut is a good star right now that if you don't know that one you could choose maybe antares uh, or, or you could use Vega. Vega would be a great one. Okay, so let's say that I'm actually, let's use Vega. Vega is a great one. Let's try Vega. Now, I want to teach you a little trick right here. It turns out instead of going through the alphabet, it starts at A. I can scroll up and it goes to the end of the alphabet. And look at that. Vega is the first star that it found uh, at the end of the alphabet. I'm going to go ahead and press enter and I'm ready to begin. So the very first thing you want to do when you start the telescope is press this up arrow. And when you do that, you'll notice that the telescope pivots in a way that puts the finder scope on top. This is a big clue, right? If your finder scope is on the bottom, you did it wrong. You need to put it, put it back and start again. But usually it will be the easiest thing to do. Just press up on that big arrow. At this point, you'll notice that I can see the, the, uh, the telescope lens cap is on. I'll go ahead and remove that and set it underneath the telescope. Now we're gonna just pretend for now, but let's pretend that, uh, that Vega is in the sky over in this direction, right? So I'm gonna to wanna to push up, and then I'm gonna push this button here to start moving the telescope, change the azimuth. We've used that word before. So changing the azimuth will be the left and right arrows, and the up and down arrows are gonna change the altitude. So again, if you watch, I'm gonna show you my expert technique. Close one eye. 
using one eye, stand behind the telescope body, and use the, the, uh, an imaginary line of the telescope body to line the telescope underneath the star that you're looking for. So I'm using one eye, looking along the body, and I pr I'm pretending that Vega is up there in the sky. At this point, I can begin to lift it. Now, when it gets close, it's very important that you begin looking through the finder scope. So I'm going to go ahead and use my finder scope, and I'm going to pretend that I can see Vega up in the sky. All right, now, this is the hardest part because you're a beginner. You want to make sure you do the best job you can. When you look through the finder scope, there's a set of crosshairs we showed you before. Those crosshairs need to be right on the star. Okay, so when you get it very close, right here, right on the star, just get it as close as you can. It's like playing a video game. Then once you get it right on, you're going to go ahead and go back to the keypad and you're going to press enter. Now what this did is something important. It slowed the telescope down because now I'm going to be looking through the eyepiece. And this is the critical part. I didn't need to touch the eyepiece, by the way. Try not to. Uh, but if you do, it's no problem. We're going to wipe it down. So at this point, we're going to try to, we should see the star somewhere in the field of view. But when we look through here, we're going to use our fingers on the keypad and we're going to adjust it until it is exactly in the middle of the field of view. Do whatever it takes. And you'll notice you have to hold it for a little bit longer because it's moving slower. And then when, when it's in the middle, right here, press the align button. Okay. Now, at this point, it's going to ask you, what would you like to use for your second star? Now, I happen to know that Vega is very close to Altair. So I'm going to go ahead and search through here for Altair. There's Altair. And it's going to now, I'm going to press Enter. It's going to go find Altair for me. And so you see, I didn't actually have to go find Altair. It's going to go where it thinks Altair is located. And <laughs> I know it looks a little funny right now. I use my finder scope. I look through the finder scope. I get it really close. To, I get the, the star right in the middle. I press enter. I look through the eyepiece and put it in the center of the eyepiece. And I press align. And when I'm done, you'll see it says align success. I'm ready to go. Okay. At this point, we can do all the work we're going to be doing with the telescope. So hopefully that works and you're ready to start looking at the stars.